Hello everyone. My name is Rhonda Cole and I reside in Orange County. I am representing the Crawford and Orange County Hoosier Hillside Master Gardeners. Today I will be talking about attracting birds to your yard. Since this is pre-recorded, I will not be able to answer questions. If you have questions, you may email me at rlcole, that's C-O-L-E, 127 at yahoo.com. Again, rlcole127 at yahoo.com. I'm going to talk to you again, uh, attracting birds to your yard. Tips for attracting different types of birds that will help keep the insect population under, under control and bring beauty to your yard. There are three things to consider when trying to attract birds to your yard. First, a food source, water source, and shelter. Those are the three main things. Food. There are many types of food your, your yard birds will eat. Not all birds eat the same foods. Seeds, cracked corn, insects and spiders, fruits and berries, peanuts in the shell and out of the shell, not salted, suet, peanut butter, nectar, and sugar water. Birds should not be offered human foods, especially bread, fresh or stale, Bread provides no nutri nutritional value and moldy bread can harm birds. Chocolate is toxic to birds just as it is to cats and dogs. Table scraps will attract rats and mice and do not serve any salty foods to birds. My go-to source for food is black oil sunflower seeds. They will attract the largest variety of birds. They are smaller than the striped sunflower seeds and not as messy, but there would be hulls left under the feeders the same, but not as much. Striped sunflower seeds are attractive to birds also, but like I just said, they're a little more messy. Thistle and niger seed. They will attract mainly the finch family. These seeds are small and require, require a special type of feeder. They are the cleanest of seeds, leaving the little debris under the feeders. I do not recommend wild bird rice, a mix. This type of seed contains more milo and millet, and these seeds usually get picked out and left on the ground and will attract rodents. You will be wasting your money by purchasing this type of feed. Suet attracts woodpeckers, chickadees, nuthatches, tufted titmice, blue jays, wrens, creepers, cardinals, starlings, and some warblers. On this suet feeder, there's a male red-bellied woodpecker and a white-breasted nuthatch. Suet can be homemade or purchased in a wide variety for different types of feeders. For homemade recipes, you can Google homemade suet for birds and pick one you like. I have done both. However, I purchased the small cakes more than making homemade. The homemade suet is time consuming but more economical and the birds do like it. Suet is usually offered more during the winter months giving the birds more protein helping them stay healthier during the cold, cold months. I offer the no melt suet cakes during the summer months mainly so I can enjoy the many woodpeckers and other birds that love suet year round. How I I began tracking, uh, tracking the birds. I started with these types of feeders. Just a couple of feeders, a suet feeder and a, a hopper feeder. I also had a few bluebird nesting boxes and that attracted the bluebirds to nest in the boxes and raise their young. I started about 40 year, years ago doing this and have enjoyed it all ever since. Where I lived at the time, there were woods behind our house and trees all around our yard. It did not take long for the birds to find an easy meal. At night, these feeders also attracted many flying squirrels. They were a lot of fun to watch. <clears throat> in 2002, we moved on the outskirts of town here in Paoli, still in the country, and I added more feeders. This is my current feeding station. For many years, I not only fed the birds, but the deer, possums, raccoons, skunks, and squirrels. This past spring, my son-in-law and granddaughter helped me put up a fence around the feeders, and that has eliminated the deer problem, 
but not the other animals. I placed two heavy duty 16 foot by 20 foot tarps on the ground and secured them with tent stakes. A couple of times a month I sweep up the hulls and seeds and haul them out in a five gallon bucket and dump them under the pine trees nearby where the deer and other animals clean them up. Some birds eating habits are different from other birds. Some will use hanging feeders. Others will never use hanging feeders. Some will eat only on the ground or out of a ground feeder. Others will use only stationary feeders such as hopper feeders on a pole. Then some will eat from all these feeders and on the ground. I made the raised tray feeder you see here in this picture. The hardware cloth, I used hardware cloth and covered it with a window screen and the, it, it attracts a lot, a lot of birds. The hopper feeder on the top right is um, well liked by the birds and then the bottom two on the left, left and right are squirrel proof feeders but I had to put a chain on the one on the right because it was being, the lid was being taken off by something and so I just put a chain on it so they can't get into it. The other one uh, unhooks underneath so it, it didn't, the lid doesn't come up on it. Hanging tray feeder, uh, like I said, not all birds will use this so they don't like to swing in the wind. There's another squirrel proof feeder. And then I also, to do my pool, pool, I'm sorry, pole feeders, I took a concrete block and put some PVC pipe in it that would be hold my pole feeders. And that way I didn't have to put a put those feeders in the ground because they'd always lean when in the wind or when it got really wet and dry, wet and rainy. This is the back of our house. Um, I have four suet cake feeders and two seed cake uh, feeders. The seed cake feeders are here. This is a suet feeder, suet feeder, a seed cake feeder, and then I also have hummingbird feeders. I had uh, four put up during the summer. And then there's a finch feeder here, and that I moved this finch feeder over here away from the station I had because finch finches don't like to be social birds. They they like to be by themselves more than be around other birds. And I found I have more finches visiting this feeder since I've moved it away from the other birds. About three years ago, I've had finally had Orioles come to our yard. I immediately went out and purchased special feeders for these birds because they love fruit, especially oranges and grape jelly. They've come back every spring but usually do not stick around, but this summer they graced me with a pair sticking around, the male and the female, and I'd see the male more often than I would the female. Um, I'm sure she was doing all the work and taking care of the babies, but um, the male visited the feeder several times a day and once in a while I would see the female. I'm sure they had a nest nearby, however, I never did find it. Their nests uh, usually look like a, it's a hanging nest, made, it looks like a gourd actually. These are birds that I've photographed eating from my bird feeders. These are the seed eating birds. I had a male blue grosbeak come by uh, about last year I think it was first time I'd ever seen one and I haven't seen it since but they didn't they didn't stick around it was during um, migration and they can consume the gross beaks can consume a lot of feed uh, they love their black oil sunflower seeds blue jays I have year-round um, they feed on the ground they like hanging feeders that they'll eat they'll eat from anything and they'll eat a lot I have, usually have a group of um, American crows. Uh, usually they come by and they like to have scraps and stuff too, but I don't feed them like that anymore. Um, they, they can be a, a scavenger too, They uh, like a vulture. You'll see them every once in a while along the roadside 
uh, eating a dead roadkill. But they'll come to the feeders and they eat seed and they try to eat on my suet feeders and they're so big that they sometimes they'll knock them down. The brown thrasher, um, you can tell a, a thrasher and that not be a wood thrush because of its bright yellow eye. And it started coming around and the male and female look alike. And he comes around and uh, picks around on the ground, but they, they're more of a ground feeding bird. The male northern cardinal, of course, is the Indiana state bird, and they, they are a seed eater. You can tell most of the seed eater birds have this large, thick bill, uh, uh, um, and that's how you can tell a seed eater. The male red-winged blackbird, the blackbirds, uh, red-winged blackbirds, are usually the first ones that I hear come back uh, in the springtime. I know their voice, and I usually see it, hear them before I'll see them. We have our neighbors has a pond behind their house, and red-winged blackbirds like to nest near ponds and the body bodies of water. Here's a male rose-breasted grosbeak on a suet cake, and a female on the seed cake. These, like I said, they've got the big wide bills, and you can tell that's why they eat, they eat mainly seeds, and they, but they will eat suet once in a while when they can get on the suet cakes. There's a little tuf tufted titmouse. They're a small bird, and they're, they uh, are called a tufted titmouse because up here on their head, you can barely see it, but when they get kind of frightened or they start calling because of uh, danger, that little tuft comes up and it looks like they've got a mohawk. Morning doves, and until I took this picture, I didn't realize that morning doves have a light blue ring around their eye. It's really, really prominent in this picture. But morning doves uh, eat a lot on the ground, mainly on the ground, but then they also eat on the tray feeders and the hanging feeders also. Thistle, uh, Niger seed. This is my thistle seed feeder. And on the one side, male American goldfinch in springtime molt. This bird, he was just in this, when this fall and the spring, they molt back and forth. They get their bright yellow coat during the summer months. And then in the fall, they molt back to them and they look more like the female. And the females here is on the other side female American goldfinch. I had this year a male indigo bunting arrive and it liked the Niger seed also. On the right is an, a male um, American goldfinch. The, the bunting has a bigger bill and I was surprised to see it on the finch feeder, but they will eat seeds also, but they very seldom visit my feeders. I was very surprised this summer to see one. Not all birds eat seeds or suet. Indiana has only one species of hummingbird, and that is the ruby-throated hummingbirds. On occasion, there might be one that strays in from the west, but our main uh, hummingbird is a ruby-throated hummingbird. They will eat small insects, and spiders, but their main food source is nectar from flowers or sugar water we provide. I plead with you to never use the red sugar water you can purchase or never add red food coloring to your uh, sugar water. That is not good for the birds. The ideal sugar water ratio is one cup granulated white sugar to four cups water. It is it's Recommended that you boil your water, your sugar water, but I never have. I use it right out of the tap, stir it real well, and serve it right away. And I don't make a big bunch of it. And if I do make, have some left over, I stick it in the refrigerator. But sugar water can get moldy real quickly. So every two to three days, I recommend that you change your uh, water, the sugar water, dump it out, use a brush to clean out the container, separate the tray that the water is held in, and then uh, I use a clean 
mascara brush to clean the holes out and get out any of the black mold. And then I use a um, magic Mr. Clean magic eraser to clean out the rest of the mold. And then I rinse it real, real well and then uh, fill it back up with water and hang it back out. But I, every two to three days, especially in the hot summer months, you need to clean that feeder um, a couple times a week at least. And if you see that it's getting moldy, that's when to clean it. Also bees, I've had yellow jackets and I've had little small, the small bumblebees try to get into the water. It doesn't really hurt them. The, the bees, the hummingbirds will um, get rid of the bees. They'll chase them away for a while, but um, there's not much you can do to keep the bees out. Tree swallows, any kind of swallows, most swallows will catch their food on the fly. Um, it's so relaxing to sit and watch the tree swallows fly in the air, catch their food. They just glide and they are so graceful. And they will, you can attract them by putting up bluebird houses because they are cavity dwelling or uh, nesting birds and they will, they actually nest more in my bluebird houses than I have bluebirds. Um, bluebirds will not nest real close to each other. They like to nest about a, about an acre apart. So I usually put one in the front yard where they, I've got seven uh, bluebird houses, but some of them are in the front of the house and some of them are in the back of the house. That way they can't see each other. So I may have two or three bluebird nests a year, but I usually have more tree swallows and they're, they're a really pretty bird. So, but they eat on the fly mainly, and then once in a while you'll see them drop down to the ground and catch an insect, but that's why not all birds eat seeds or suet. So some of these birds will never visit your feeders. Baltimore Orioles, they like oranges, grape jelly, suet cakes, beetles, grasshoppers, spiders, and fruit. Um, you can just lay the, you don't have to have a special feeder like I've got. You can just cut an orange in half and just lay the oranges on the ground. They'll find it that way. The only thing is, so will the ants. So that's why I bought the feeders is to keep the ant population away. But uh, they love oranges and grape jelly. American robins, of course, they eat earthworms. They eat berries, insect, larva, fruit, and mealworms. Now, I've had a lot of uh, blue uh, robins in my yard right now i've had several robins they're eating all the bugs and every insects that's why i feed i feed them because they come to your yard and they still eat insects and things so i don't have as many insects populations as i used to have woodpeckers adult male and this is an adult male and a juvenile male downy on a suet feeder the the um juvenile you can tell about him because he's right here and his head isn't as bright red as the uh, adult. This on the this one on the right here, male. He's a male hairy woodpecker, and these woodpeckers look quite a bit alike. However, the you know, the way you can tell a hairy woodpecker is he's a little bit larger than the downy, but he has the same um, red dot on the back of his head like the downy. He has pretty much the same patterns of wings and body, but he's got a longer bill. His bill is quite a bit longer than the downy woodpeckers. That's how you can tell the difference in, in those birds. And they love the suet, so that's why I offer suet year-round because I, I have I have actually all of the woodpeckers except the pileated and the yellow sapsucker, yellow bellied sapsucker. They're the only two woodpeckers that have not visited my feeders. My red headed woodpecker, he came around about five years ago. The male and the female look quite a bit alike, but they love the suet and the seed cakes. This is a female red-bellied woodpecker, and the way you can tell a male and a female from each other is the female's red head 
starts at the top of the crown and goes down to the back, and the male starts above the eyes and goes all the way down the back. That's how you can tell the difference in the female and the male. Certain birds use different feeders. The top one, uh, both of these are hopper or house feeders. Either hanging or fixed on poles attract finches, jays, cardinals, buntings, grosbeaks, sparrows, chickadees, titmice, and nuthatches, and several other birds. Most hopper feeders are more difficult to clean than tray feeders. If the seed gets wet, bacteria and fungus can thrive, so it's very important that you check to make sure that there isn't any um, mold collecting, because when they get wet, that's what happens. Even feeders that advertise to be squirrel-proof never are. So be prepared to chase squirrels away no matter what kind of feeder you, you use. They can figure a, out a way to get to the seeds. They're pretty crafty. Tray feeders, hanging ground and raised. These feeders attract the widest variety of birds, including the dreaded pigeons or European starlings and English sparrows. For drainage, choose a tray feeder that uses wire for the bottoms or has plenty of holes. I have, of course, the hanging tray feeder like you see here. Um, I've had a lot of success with those. I've, my, tr my tray feeder is taller than this and it doesn't have a cover like this one, but I have a lot of birds that enjoy that. And I used to use the ground feeders like this, but I just as soon put it on the ground than mess with one of those feeders. Tube feeders are mainly used for thistle seed. These feeders have pores that have smaller holes and is, since the seed is so small it has to have smaller holes to keep the seeds in place. All finches will eat niger seed. American finches, house finches, purple finches, indigo buntings, just to name a few. The next source is water source. The water is very important to birds. All living things require water for survival. You can attract birds to your yard only providing a water source. You don't even have to feed them, really. You'll, you'll attract birds with a water source. Some, say, some people say that it isn't natural for your birds to use a pedestal bird bath. However, I provide two ground bird baths and a pedestal and the pedestal is used more often. During the winter months, adding a heater like this one, there's several different kind of heaters, but I use this kind of a heater. Um, it will keep the birds coming to your yard during the winter months. I actually think the bird bath gets more use during the winter than it does in the summer. The heaters can be pricey. I paid $40 for this type, but it's worked for 10 years and it's well worth the money. I just plug in a long extension cord into a house and uh, we got an outside uh, outlet and put it away around so I don't trip on it if I'm going to go out to feed the birds. And you can see here, I've got, I, and this isn't really during the winter, but it's towards the beginning of winter. And these bluebirds and American goldfinches love this bird bath. Here I've got more eastern bluebirds and goldfinch in another feeder or bird bath, I'm sorry. Um, this bird bath uh, with a pebble type, I don't use it anymore because it was very difficult to clean. You have to clean your bird baths just like you do your feeders. Uh, in fact, in the summertime, I bet twice a week I have to clean it out with, I usually use the Mr. Clean Magic Erasers. They're good for just about anything, um, but they do get algae on them. So you really have to keep the feeders clean also. Um, there's a, two, two male brown-headed cowbirds on this bird bath. Um, I'm not a big fan of brown-headed cowbirds, mainly because the female will lay her eggs in other birds' nests and let them raise her babies. You will, many, many times I've seen a northern cardinal feeding a juvenile brown-headed cowbird. So I call these lazy birds. They're... They're, ver they're really lazy birds. I, they're not my favorite, but you, the one thing you have to really know is 
All birds are protected under the Migratory, Migra Migratory Bird Act Treaty. You cannot shoot and kill any birds except pigeons, European starlings, and English sparrows. They are not on the protected list. So as much as I dislike brown-headed cowbirds, they are safe. <laughs> Here's a ground bath. Mine isn't this fancy, but a little bit of water is all it takes for a bird to be happy. And the bu and bubbler rocks really attract birds because they like the sound of the running water. I'd like to have one of those, but it takes a little bit more know-how to do than I have. And the, the last thing we're going to talk about is shelter. Shelter provides safety from predators and safe nesting areas. What types of shelters should you provide? Evergreen trees and shrubs, all kinds of plants are good for food and shelter. Brush piles, roost or nesting boxes. This is my brush pile that's just the edge of the woods by our house and I add to it every year. You can see it's got all kinds of stuff in it. And what happens is, especially in the winter time, you, a lot of birds can get into those little cracks and crevices and be safe from predators and keep warm. They'll all huddle up on side of there and, and their body heat keeps each other warm. Um, the roosting box, I don't have one of these. I never have used one of these, but they're a good uh, shelter provide. They provide good shelter. Um, those little doll rods on there, all of them will pile into that. It's, it looks like a bluebird nesting box that has a hole in the front that you can't see it too well, but there's, it's right, uh, right here's their, the hole. Um, they can, certain size birds can get in there and they all can roost together and keep warm with their body heat. My nesting boxes provide shelter in the winter months. I've had, like I said, seven bluebird houses. Um, here's bluebird houses. Here's a wood a woodpecker house here. The wood, and the reason I can know they're different is because of this hole size. The hole size, like these um, screech owls, you can see the hole's a lot bigger. But all these n nesting boxes provide shelter during the winter months. You know, a lot of birds will get in there at once and, and cuddle, to, cuddle up together. That pretty much ends the educational part of this program, but I just wanted to show you some more birds that I've photographed in my yard. These are birds that you can, can uh, attract to your yard. Some of these are not, they're just photographs of birds because I've never had a, a, an eagle come to my yard. I wish it would, but this eagle was taken out, uh, a picture was taken near Bedford. Um, I do have a Cooper's hawk. Uh, he came around eh, probably five years ago. Doesn't stay around, but when, I, when the birds don't come around, I can tell there's a hawk in the area, and, and it's usually him. He's a very pretty bird. He came when he was a juvenile, and uh, the birds will fly away when they see him. In fact, I've seen... When he's out hanging up, hanging on a pole in my feeder air section, I have seen so many downy woodpeckers get caught at the suet feeders and they will not move a muscle, not even their eyes, until that bird, the hawk, leaves. Um, here's a fe female brown-headed cowbird. Chipping sparrow. The chipping sparrow is very small and they're a fun little bird to watch. They eat mainly on the ground. I've had a mockingbirds. They love the suet. Eastern kingbird and the eastern kingbird. What they do, how they eat, is they like he's uh, balanced on a limb right here, and they they find a bug and they fly out real quick and catch it and then fly back to the the perch. There's a female northern cardinal and a northern flicker. Northern flickers are considered a woodpecker, but they mainly eat on the ground. They like to eat ant hills. Uh, mainly, you can, I've had some this just this last week eating from the ground. You can see them just peck, peck, peck into the ground and so they, they like their ant, the ants. 
And here's a, fo a fox sparrow. I very seldom have them in my yard either, but they eat on the ground. On this slide, there's a juvenile red-bellied woodpecker. And the reason you can tell it's a juvenile because it doesn't have any red on its head at all yet. And I, I have one right now that's been coming to the feeder, and I still don't know if it's a male or a female because there isn't any red on its head yet. And then this is a downy woodpecker, and I can't tell if it's a male or female because I can't see its top, the top of its head. If it's a male, it's got a red dot on its head. The female lacks that red dot. And this is a juvenile red-headed woodpecker. You can tell, and this is kind of a, not a very good photo of it, but its head's real, real faded. So that's how you can tell, and it's got a streaked body. The, uh, when it gets to be an adult, it'll be a bright red head, and this body here will be all pure white. Looks like he's got a tuxedo on. The male rufous-sided towhee, they are mainly ground feeders. Uh, actually, for them to come up to my uh, house, which they've done this year, uh, is very odd because they usually like to stay at the edge of the woods, and they scratch through the leaf debris and round, uh, round up the, bur the bugs and insects and larvae. And this year I had the female rufous side sided towhee come up to the house. She got real close to the patio, and she's just as pretty as the, the male is. Usually the males are, sport the uh, pretty coats, but this in here is just as pretty. And then down here, my, my son-in-law took this picture back in 2008 at their old house, and he had put a hummingbird feeder close to his, um, some of his shrubs. And this praying mantis grabbed a hummingbird and was eating it. And it was its meal. So be careful where you place your hummingbird feeders. Make sure that you check them too, because even though mine are hung on my patio um, posts, I have had, um, I have had to take praying mantis off the feeder a couple times and put them on the plants and get them away from the feeders. So you might want to check your feeders every now and then for um, praying mantis. White crown sparrows are kind of rare to, to uh, find in your yards too, but I, they're really a pretty bird. I've had him a couple times. I've also had turkey vultures because something was dead in our yard. I don't know what it was, but I've had the turkey vultures. See a lot of female, male, and baby wild turkeys come through our yard. This summer, I had a yellow-throated warbler just stop by. I just, if I hadn't been sit, standing by the kitchen window, I would have never seen it. They're a very pretty bird. I very seldom get to photograph warblers. They're very hard to find. You pretty much have to go out in the woods and listen for them because they like to hide in the trees. And there's a female Baltimore Oriole. And she likes, she's on the hummingbird feeder. They like to eat out of the hummingbird feeders too. And uh, last but not least, uh, here's another creature that visits my yard. And this year, they two of them decided they liked it so well, they just lay underneath the shade and stay for a while. White-tailed deer. Here are some references if you want to uh, jot these down or take a picture of them with your phone. HowToMakeHomemadeBirdFood.com PennyWiseTips.com on different seed mixes for wild birds. WildlifeTrust.org How to provide water for your wild, wild, wildlife. I cannot speak. Uh, BackyardChirper.com and birdwatchersdigest.com. I found a few of these to be very interesting references. And so this concludes my presentation. I hope you all have enjoyed it. And again, if you would like to have questions sent to me, rlcole127 at yahoo.com. Thank you for your time.